What's good YouTube? What's good Instagram? Welcome to the next video on the Pixar playlist on Sterling on Cinemas. That's Cinemas with an S. And today I will give you my review on Toy Story 4. And before I begin, if you are new to this video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, or if you're new to this playlist. And the same thing goes if you're on Instagram. If you've, if this is your first time on my channel, you just happen to run into it, don't forget to follow me, like this video, and share it on your story with your friends and family. And to the people on YouTube, I really need y'all to help me out right now. Like, please, I'm begging you. I am desperate. I really need y'all to help me out because I'm at 99 subscribers. Like, currently, as I speak, I'm at 99 subscribers, and I'm just on the brink of 100 and beyond. So help me to get there. Help me to pass a milestone that I never thought I would be able to see. Let's begin. Now, Woody, Buzz, Lightyear, and the rest of the gang embark on a road trip with Bonnie and a new toy named Forky. The adventurous journey turns into an unexpected reunion as Buddy's, Woody's, excuse me, Woody's slight detour leads him to his long lost friend Bo Peep. As Woody and Bo discuss the old days, they soon start to realize that they're worlds apart. They are worlds apart when it comes to what they want from life as a toy. Now, Toy Story 4. You know, going into this movie, I didn't think it was going to be as good. I didn't think it was going to be better than the last three, or even three itself, or even measure up to all three movies combined, but turns out I was wrong. Because Toy Story 4 is a sequel that the rest of us didn't really need, but we got. Especially when you consider that amazing epilogue at the end of Toy Story 3, right? We had reached the end of an era when we left on such a touching note with these toys and Andy. And we didn't think that we would ever get another play date with these characters. Because Toy Story 3 felt like a real ending to this, to this story, to this world of toys. But to support this fact, in between Toy Story 3 and 4, we got a whole lot of shorts that features the toys getting into minor dangers and perils like Toy Story of Terror, That Time Forgotten, Hawaiian Vacation, Party Source Rex, and the list goes on. So it's not like if we did not get a movie, we would not be seeing these characters. And plus, we currently, something is about to happen. We currently have Pixar Popcorn on Disney+. Plus. And for those, if you have Disney Plus or you're a huge Disney fan, you know what I'm talking about. For those of you who don't have Disney Plus who are not familiar with this, Pixar Popcorn is just a series of mini movies by from different from some of your favorite Pixar franchises like Toy Story, Incredibles, Monsters Inc., Coco, and Soul. But although we knew that the toys as a group, as a whole, as a unit, reached their destination at the end of the third entry. But the audience must have known that deep down, Woody never got to his destination. Toy Story 4 is not a movie about the toys. It's not a story about toys. It is a movie about Woody and his relationship with Bo Peep. We have seen their chemistry flourish in the two in the first two films, but it was overlooked and overshadowed by the larger circumstances that occurred, like with Sid, with Woody confronting Buzz about his identity, Sid the Roundup Gang, and Sunnyside Daycare. All this big stuff was happening that nobody had time to even study their relationship. However, this is where Toy Story 4 came to fill in a large and long-awaited plot hole in the beloved Pixar series. So for those of you who kind of believe that 4 was an unneeded, unnecessary film, yes, it was. But in a sense, it was kind of it was kind of felt like a spinoff for Woody because this is about finishing Woody's story, although everybody else's story is finished because they were a group. Like what happens to one person in the group affects the other person in the group. Like everything that happens in Mr. Potato Head happens to Rex, happens to Slink, happens to Jesse. They all go through the same things together. Therefore, they will reach the destination together. But Woody, you know, he's he's the leader of the group. So he faces his own personal things, per own personal problems and issues and desires and this is what Toy Story 4 is for. Now before I continue in this section I just want to say that the toys have never looked so much better in Toy Story 4. Like I know Toy Story 4 and Toy Story 3's animation is not really all that different because they're pretty much close to a more refined and more enhanced and more digital look with updated software but I must say the toys look more polished than ever. Like they, they shine in every frame that they're in. 
Part of the journey is the end. For Andy's toys, their journeys ended with Toy Story 3, just like I mentioned, but not so much for Woody. See, we get we first get a flashback that features the toys rescuing RC. That was the toy go-kart, remote control go-kart from the first movie. But the integral meaning of the opening was to show how close Woody was to Bo and how much he loved her. Every Toy Story film after 1995 would always introduce new toys, but mainly focus on the usual suspects. But Toy Story 4 doesn't do this. This movie does the exact opposite and makes Andy's toys the supporting characters and places Woody, Forky, and Bo Peep and newer toys at the forefront of the story. When we are first introduced to Forky, a character made from scratch by Bonnie or Scraps the Trash, he quickly becomes the new priority for Woody with his identity disorder. Remember that? Remember identity disorder? Like how you are not a space ranger, you are a toy. You are not a cowboy, you are a toy. You are not forgotten, you are a toy. You are not trash, you are a toy. Toys can't fly into space. Toys can't ride on horses. Toys should not be deserved to get thrown away. Toys don't come from the trash. They get played with. The cost of trying to secure Forky places him inside of a sleuth of surprises for the audience, including being reunited with Bo Peep. See, when we first met Bo Peep for the first time in Toy since Toy Story 2, her look and logic have changed. She is made aware that the world is big, but even bigger when you are a toy. Therefore, there are a ton of adventures in store for a toy to create memories from. Bo's new appearance feels like a very fitting appearance, and it's much better than from that from that ordinary Mary had a little lamb looking dress, but she, but this look, it feels reminiscent of an outside outcast survivor, which is kind of what she is. Cause she's a, I wouldn't say lost toy, but she's on her own. She's an independent freelancing individual. Now we all know that they are just toys, but when I watch Woody and Bo Peep reflecting on their lives and having their intimacy, makes them feel like a human couple, which is just something I would never th think I would try to feel. Never even try to feel because I know they're just toys. Like in one and two, you know, their their chemistry, their romantic chemistries were brief. This, which is why you never had time to get a feel for them or to be like, oh, you know. But Toy Story 4 makes you feel that. Like from the beginning, it is very established that Woody loves Bo Peep. He loves her so much because... He's so, she is somebody that he wants to share her moments with. Now, the hint of Bo Peep still being out there started at an antique store where we met Gabby Gabby in the Benson Dummies. Gabby Gabby is a huge standout over the previous Toy Story villains because she is not, she's not really labeled an antagonist, if you will, but she is more somebody who desires to get played with. And this is a huge turn of events because if you take every single... If you take every single villain in the Toy Story series or mainly in the Pixar canon, most of these villains don't even try to get redemption. Sure, some of these Pixar villains have a great reason for what they do. Like Charles Muntz wanted to capture Kevin to clear his name and to make himself popular again. Um, <laughs> Evelyn Dever wanted to keep hypnotized superheroes so we can keep them illegal so people won't stop getting hurt. Will stop getting hurt. And, and you know, Chef Skinner wanted to keep the rat out of the kitchen to keep the kitchen clean. But, you know, Gabby Gabby is one of those Pixar villains where her motives, her reasons don't harm anybody. See, Sid breaks and destroys toys for a living. Stinky Pete, the prospector, chooses to be merchandise instead of making memories. And Lotso pretty much resents himself and other toys who have owners because he believes that they are all destined to be thrown away. That's all a toy is. But Gabby Gabby is a whole different story because she is somebody who craves to be played with. You know, she's not really threatening nobody if she don't get what she wants. All she's asking is for Woody's voice box. Sure, that is a little graphic though. To pull the inside organ out of a toy. But she has a redemption arc in Toy Story 4 and she gets it. She gets what she craves. 
which is something that is more satisfying and relieving to watch the fate of a villain give. There's not much to say about Ducky and Bunny, aside from they are two of the most hilarious characters in the movie, voiced by the comedic duo Key and Peele. The only original toy who keeps his prominent role will always be Buzz Lightyear. Pixar uses his whole Space Ranger reputation that everybody's just annoyed from throughout this whole series. He's pretend he always thought he was a Space Ranger in one. He pre he fought another version of himself, another Space Ranger, Buzz Lightyear toy, who thought he was a Space Ranger. Then he was even brainwashed to be a Space Ranger and this, but now he uses his voice box, his toy voice box to guide him through this movie. But the reputation creates a moral to the story, which is to listen to your inner voice. And by inner voice, in their sense, they mean the voice box. Like he presses the buttons like to infinity and beyond. You know, it means go over there. Or it's a secret mission and I'm charging bay. Let's go. It means go over there. You know, he'll listen to whatever. He knows that <laughs> he knows that when he presses it, presses the buttons, like the audio lines are not for real, but he's just trying to, like I said, they, they play around with this stuff. It's genius. But to listen to your inner voice means to like, to, to listen to what your subconscious is saying. Like Jiminy Cricket said, like the still small voice that people don't listen to. But because your inner voice doesn't always match how you feel about your about something in your heart and mind. That is why your inner voice is always the first thing that speaks because the heart doesn't have a voice, the mind doesn't have a voice, but your inner subconscious has a voice. But the end result of Woody listening to his inner voice results in the most satisfying ending in any Pixar franchise thus far. Hey, I guess, I guess Tim Allen wasn't really lying when he said that the ending of Toy Story Four was going to be like the ending to Avengers Infinity War and Aaron Game. It was going to be very satisfying, very emotional, and it's very reminiscent of when Steve Rogers got his last dance that he was always promised. Rotten Tomatoes gives Toy Story 4 a 97% score. Toy Story 4 offers the audience an extra epilogue to an already perfect franchise. I will call this franchise perfect because it's not fair to say one movie is better than the other three. Because like I thought, I told y'all, I thought 4 was not going to be as good as 3. I'm not going to say that three top, 4 top 3 or anything. But it, it had, out of all 4 movies, this had the, the greater emotional weight. But this right here, that makes for an adequate and very complete quadrilogy. Quadrilogy. By having a story that is truly centered on Woody and his personal desires while also adding elements and plot points that would feel more emotional and more human than ever. So Toy Story 4 deserves, I'm, I don't want to give it the score, it deserves, this isn't something, opinion, this is what it deserves. It deserves 10 SOs out of 10. Perfect conclusion. Not a perfect movie, perfect conclusion. This, this the, the, the Toy Story movies are truly the best Pixar franchise. My favorite is Incredibles. But the best Pixar franchise was always the one from the beginning, Toy Story, since day one. You've always loved hearing Tom Hanks as Woody, Tim Allen as Buzz Lightyear, and always the centering, centers, central themes around friendship, acceptance, and identity, etc. You always enjoy watching these movies, no matter what age you are. Whether you're as young as 19 years old or as old as 40 years old, you will always enjoy Toy Story movies. Whether we would get a Toy Story 5 or not, we're not. I'm not saying we will. We shouldn't. They should leave it right here. But when you look back on all these four Toy Story movies, you'll always feel the same amount of delight and the same amount of joy. So that is my review on Toy Story 4. Y'all can let me know what y'all think of it in the comments below. How does it compare to the other three Toy Story movies? Do you think one is better than the other? Or do you just like them all or whatnot? But y'all can let me know in the comments and I'll see y'all later.